Now I gotta be a little bit careful here because one plus fans be out for blood. Some of my conclusion right at the top of this video, I really like using this phone. This little monster is a badass. That doesn't mean I won't have a few criticisms and also tackling comparisons with other devices needs to be handled with a little nuance. Like several manufacturers this year, the OnePlus 6 is an answer to a number of 2018 trends. Minimizing bezels and using glass on the back of your phone to create a shiny, emotionally appealing gadget. Now the hook for OnePlus has always been been packing in those enthusiast pleasing specs with a price point that radically undercuts flagship premium devices. However, for all of the fan sentiment surrounding this brand, this phone is still a mid-ranger. We'll talk about that more in just a bit. Okay, starting off with design, the OnePlus experiment is eminently successful. In the hand to the eye, there's nothing I can point to which would be out of place on a more expensive phone. Nah, I'm not gonna belabor the point. I've already produced a separate video on this channel uh, talking about my own personal bias, grumbling about things like glass backs on phones. But if we're following trends, the 2018 playbook for a smartphone manufacturer, then OnePlus is on the pulse here in a very satisfying way. For this being OnePlus's first foray into a glass manufacturing for the back of one of their phones, I'm happy they've at least seen the light for accessories. In the box, we get a perfectly reasonable, lightweight little bumper case. It's clear. It's going to show off the phone. It's going to add a little bit of uh, durability, a little bump and bruise protection, keep you away from some of those scratches. It's such a small gesture, but it's a really nice touch to help this purchase feel a bit more complete out of the box. Ditto the really nice screen protector, which comes pre-installed. But if you've seen any of my previous OnePlus videos, you probably have guessed where I'm going to go with this. Sandstone. The Sandstone case, this is my jam. My OnePlus 6 will live in this case. They have a great collection of other materials and textures, but Sandstone is an iconic feel for the OnePlus brand. Actually, for the cases situation in general, several other manufacturers could learn a few things from OnePlus and how to offer up a first party accessory for the phone they make, but I digress. Moving from just the aesthetics of the design to some of the hardware on the back of this phone, I have to say I have been a little disappointed in this fingerprint sensor. This has been one of the finickier fingerprint sensors that I've ever had the pleasure of using, and even though I've been using the phone for a couple weeks, I'd still find my hit rate to be around 50% unlocking the phone on the first try. Another vote in favor of using a case, it gives your finger a better target to aim for. There's nothing wrong with using a face unlock solution, and the face unlock on the OnePlus 6 works as advertised. It's really snappy quick. I still prefer using the fingerprint sensor though in that I like my phone to be on and unlocked. I like being on a home screen before the phone is even up to my face rather than holding the phone up to my face and waiting for it to unlock even if that unlock happens in a fraction of a second. And it's always worth reiterating how much I love the notification rocker on the OnePlus. This is a feature I've enjoyed since the middle days of the Palm pilot and I still enjoy it today. All right, moving to the front face, talking about this display, we've been fetishizing this removal of bezels. So of course, the OnePlus 6 is joining a trend of adding a notch into the display to house things like the earpiece speaker and your selfie camera. I still think it's an eyesore. I mean, sure, Android seems to handle this kind of hardware a little bit better than iOS. You don't run into situations with as many weird app incompatibilities or media that gets cut into if you're viewing movies full screen, but I still don't like it. One bit of additional commentary as opposed to me rehashing my bias video all over again, I actually really do like this layout for the notch, the hardware that's built into this little screen cutout. The order of these little hardware bits, it's such a little thing, but it actually is kind of noticeable when you're moving back and forth between different phones. Center punching the earpiece, so when you're taking calls, it lines right up with your ear, and slightly offsetting the selfie camera doesn't really seem to disrupt front-facing photos. Remember, I just got done reviewing the G7, and I was surprised by that little bit of muscle memory retraining, which I had to do just for picking up the phone and answering the phone, and how I was sort of right back to normal on the OnePlus 6. Again, not a big deal. It, just one of those silly things you notice when you're swapping phones out a lot. Otherwise, this is a perfectly capable AMOLED. Great viewing angles. I don't know, do we still care about that in 2018? Trying to look at our phones from extremely odd angles. 
Uh, good overall brightness, a very good outdoor readability, not only for that brightness, but also because of the excellent contrast on an OLED screen. The difference between darks and brights really helps with that readability. Outside of VR, where you're gonna have magnification on this screen, this is an excellent daily companion. Now, we're talking OnePlus, so we gotta peek under the hood, and we would expect nothing less than high-end flagship top-tier guts. I'm reviewing the 128 gigabyte version of the OnePlus 6, that comes with eight gigabytes of RAM in addition to that Snapdragon 845 processor. This is hot rod territory for a phone. When paired with Oxygen OS, a really lean manufacturer build of the operating system, very close to stock Android, we should expect nothing less than screamer performance. And yeah, this thing is fast. It multitasks extremely well. The overall aesthetic is a really clean look. It stays out of the user's way. It does sort of prompt the user to customize a little bit more rather than giving you an experience out of the box, but I think a lot of people who are apt to be considering this phone are going to appreciate that. And Oxygen OS is one of the few out-of-the-box experiences where I don't feel this burning need to rush out and install Nova Launcher, my preferred third-party skin to slap on most of the phones that I review outside of that normal review window just so I have something familiar. It's very similar navigation to what I install on Nova and OnePlus's launcher includes my two favorite home screen swipe gestures where you can pull up the app drawer or pull down the notification shade from aiming in the middle of the screen. You don't have to hit all the way up from the bottom or all the way down from the top. Those are becoming more important gestures for me as phones are becoming taller and skinnier, but we're gonna cover a little bit more about the UI in just a bit. Getting back to the overall system performance, I'm definitely repeating myself here, but if you're looking for one of those phones just to cover the basics, a little like email, some social media, this kind of hardware is gross overkill. Now, one could make an argument for this level of performance today being a nice bit of future proofing against future operating system updates, and especially that sort of bloat and software feature creep that a lot of our apps go through. Everyone loves having the most buttery, liquidy, smooth UI, you don't want to lose that kind of responsiveness. If you're staying at that surface level, a Qualcomm 845, you're only scratching the surface of what that chipset is really capable of. Gaming phones are definitely becoming a thing, but before we get there, the OnePlus 6 has that niche pretty well covered with an insane bang for buck performance ratio. And this quantity of RAM, even stepping down to the entry level, six gigabytes of RAM in a phone, I'll never bog it down with the apps I use to get my work done. We're not talking about note-taking apps or business instant messaging services. Nah, this is the entire Microsoft Office suite with an audio interface recording app uh, and a video editor where I'm regularly pumping out 4K video renders directly from the device that I'm shooting content from. Even if I had only six gigabytes of RAM and I were keeping some kind of graphics intense game running in the background, I'm not getting to the point where the phone is force closing applications through some kind of RAM management. This is a great tier of performance. And like I said, gaming phones are becoming a thing. So hopefully we'll see some more software on the horizon, which will really tax this setup. Maybe, fingers crossed. And it definitely seems like OnePlus is anticipating this kind of more aggressive use. On the OnePlus 6, alongside several other manufacturers, there is a gaming performance mode. This changes up the normal UI, how the phone handles notifications, calls, alerts, and then also tries to minimize system overhead from other applications, giving you as much horsepower as the phone can dedicate towards the app that's on your screen. You just add an app to the list and whenever that app fires up, it kicks over the game performance mode. It's really easy, definitely something you should consider using if you were looking at the OnePlus 6 as some kind of multimedia content machine. Lastly, for hardware, we should probably talk about networking. I've been very happy with the LTE performance. I have my Project Fi SIM in this phone right now, which means it's just defaulting to the T-Mobile network, and I've been getting great connection around town in my less than scientific testing. Wi-Fi, however, has been generally good to very good on my home network. I have a mesh router, which can sometimes be a little persnickety with some of the phones that I'm tapped to review. The OnePlus 6 is generally very good at landing the full bandwidth of my cable connection, 
but with a few noticeable super flaky moments where performance would significantly drop and it would take a second before the phone would catch back up again. I think I caught one of those moments while running a speed test. That gets us circling back to the software. Again, I really like this light touch alteration approach to Android. Everything is about where you would expect it to be, all of the elements, all of the pieces. There's very little getting in your way, but there are a few little flares to help the manufacturer stand out from the competition. I've already mentioned those home screen gestures that I personally enjoy, but there are plenty of other just little tweaks and little swipes and little moves that you can do things to uh, capture screenshots, mute your phone calls, or control your music player. For all of those little customizations, I think there are going to be plenty of users who find one or two that really appeal to them. Now, OnePlus is pushing in a new direction with full navigation gestures, though, and this is going to be a bit more divisive. This is going to be a little more controversial. Eliminating those buttons on the bottom of your screen, those actions, going home, hitting your back button, or uh, enabling your multitasking menu, that card list of currently running apps, can now be accomplished with screen swipes and I don't love them. We could have one light touch on the bottom of the screen to accomplish this, or we can perform more of an interaction and more of a movement on the bottom lip, the very bottom edge of a very tall, skinny, near bezel-less device. Especially for tall skinny, there are gonna be a number of people that can't quite manage the one-handed use of accomplishing one of those gestures. I might have to reposition the phone in my hand a little bit to reach one of the farther reaching buttons, but I have to make a more deliberate action to reposition the phone and then accomplish a swipe, which pretty much means a lot of situations. I just have to go to using the phone with both hands, and I don't like having to pay my my phone that much attention to accomplishing basic navigation. For all of my old man cranky crotchety griping about the new things, uh, home and back actually work well enough for general daily use for me. Uh, that's actually not a bad gesture to accomplish, but it's the multitasking action which really gets in the way of a fluid user experience IMO. The fact that this is a slide up and pause makes this action so much more deliberate that I'm not going to use it in the way that Google has implemented that multitasking feature. It's one of my favorite navigating actions in Android. You've got two apps, you're trying to get information from one to the other, you're just wanting to move back and forth, and that multitasking button pop is really easy and really simple to enable. Turning that into a swipe with a stopping pause point just completely kills that kind of quick fluid interaction. Until Google pushes us over the edge for gestures in Android, I'm just operating with the compromise of hiding the navigation bar when I don't need it. Most of the time I want those buttons really easily and quickly accessible. A couple times I'll hide them in media or games just to get them out of the way and maybe also prevent a little OLED screen burn. A few other quirks, this first one maybe because of the hardware notification switch and how you can enable or toggle that, but there doesn't seem to be a way to schedule a do not disturb on this phone. Also, this one's really annoying, especially if you like to accessorize your phone. This is the only smartphone I think I've ever used which had some sort of hard toggle switch for enabling and disabling USB host. Totally freaked me out when I was plugging things into the USB port on this phone and they weren't being recognized. I had to go to Twitter and someone clued me in that there was this option in the advanced setting, so a couple menus deep. Um, but eventually I did get it to recognize hard drives, flash drives, and the audio input from my Samsung Go Mic Mobile. That said, when it comes to support, we're doing pretty well. It's Android 8.1, so we're at the current version and uh, decimal point version of Android, and it's currently using the May security patch, so we're about a week out, almost two weeks out from the time this video was shot uh, into June, not getting that June security patch just yet, but overall, OnePlus has been fairly reliable for the big updates. Uh, so I'm hoping that that trend continues with this phone. Unfortunately, that's a situation we'll just have to test over time, but I'll also be looking at the OnePlus 6. This is probably gonna be my test bed for uh, Android P and uh, using developer preview software, especially for trouble support. That's something I'm very happy to see on any phone, let alone, again, a phone which is gonna cost several hundred dollars less than a premium flagship player. Shifting gears back to some hardware, much noise was made about the improved cameras 
and I am happy to say that there are some noticeable improvements over last year's OnePlus. A dual sensor system focused on improving contrast and clarity, now with optical image stabilization in tow, there's a lot to like here. Just like the rest of the phone UI, I like how clean, simple, and straightforward this camera app is, focused on just getting you to your viewfinder free of those other bandwagon trends, like cluttering up your field of view with AI buttons or other fad features. And a OnePlus should be all about the numbers, like 60 frame per second UHD video, and it's great, it's a lot of fun playing with 480 frame per second 720p slow motion. Simple, streamlined, and it gets to the point. Now, I've got a lot more to say about the OnePlus cameras. Uh, my full camera deep dive wasn't quite ready at the time I produced this review, but when it is ready to go, you're gonna see a link pop up on your screen right about now. My deep dive feature videos like these camera reviews will be Patreon exclusives. If you wanna join me on that, I've got gigs and gigs of photo and video samples for us to check out on the OnePlus 6 and see how it compares, especially against significantly more expensive options in the market. For subscribers only, check it out, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Shifting to another bit of content consumption hardware, OnePlus has historically been a diamond in the rough for audio fans. Previous OnePlus headphone jacks punching well above their price tags, rivaling, if not besting, what you'd get from a Samsung or from an iPhone. Unfortunately, I didn't find that performance to hold true on the OnePlus 6. I like the convenience of having a built-in headphone jack and it's plenty capable for soundtracking other activities, but if the activity you want to partake in is sitting down and listening to music, this is likely not going to satisfy as much as previous OnePlus phones have. If you want the full scoop, the charts, the graphs, the comparisons, and the speaker tests, uh, like my camera reviews, those will be Patreon exclusives, uh, patreon.com slash some gadget guy, and you should see a card popping up on your screen right now. So, a ton of cool tech won't mean much if your battery can't hang, and Again, happily, this is an area where the bang for buck totally wins out in the consumer's favor. This is pretty rad as the OnePlus 6 scores one of the best battery benches I've ever measured in running this video streaming benchmark. It's really nice having a high performance phone for those times I wanna crush games and I can make that choice to kill some of my battery, just enabling that kind of activity. Or the flip side of that, if I really wanna try and hyper mile this thing, I'm getting some great efficiency out of it. I easily made it into the late evening with some room to spare. And if I wanted to hyper mile this, I'm sure I could get through a full day and night and then most of the full next day under light use. But that hyper miling isn't as much of a concern when you've got crazy fast recharging. And OnePlus continues to offer up one of the fastest recharging systems available on any phone. A short stint on the charger delivers a ton of real world usage. It's neck and neck with Huawei, where the supercharger and the dash charger are head and shoulders above any of the real world performance I've clocked on Qualcomm's QC3 implementation. Whew, so, that was a lot of talking. Where does that leave us with the OnePlus 6? I like this phone a lot. A pixel-like feel, a pixel-like tier of performance for hundreds of dollars less, what's not to like? This is a monster mid-ranger. And I just felt a bunch of people cringe at me using the term mid-ranger to describe this phone. This is still a phone designed to be manufactured and sold at retail for $529. Even for adding more storage and RAM, my review unit only climbs to $629. It's a savagely smooth performer, but compared against other premium options in the flagship space, there are a few fun features missing here. Just thinking out loud here, we've got uh, wireless charging, rated water resistance, sometimes rated drop and shock resistance, expandable storage, higher resolution displays, better audio, specialty camera features, uh, custom developer software. Again, those are just off the top of my head. Now, you might not be bothered by some of those omissions. And realistically, let's be honest here. Most people, most consumers out there shouldn't be bothered by a number of those features missing either. And we should all be growing up enough. I'm making this video on YouTube. We should be able to acknowledge that 
Part of what you pay for is also wrapped up in the brand and the label, like a really well-equipped Honda versus an entry-level Acura. There's gonna be a huge Venn diagram overlap of features and performance, but these labels appeal to different consumers. Actually, I really wish we could treat our phones more like automobiles, like cars and trucks. Uh, maybe one consumer out there really needs the equivalent of a turbo diesel where someone else would be much better satisfied by a tiny little track roadster. Instead of somehow claiming that everyone should just line up uh, behind the same three sedans, but I digress. Smartphone enthusiasts, fans of the OnePlus brand, we shouldn't be insulted by calling a phone which is designed to exist in the middle of the overall smartphone market a mid-ranger. And I'm just not personally interested in tiptoeing around fanboy feelers with some kind of dance saying premium mid-ranger flagship from a budget brand. It's just too difficult. There are price tags that exist from the $100 price point to the $1,000 price point, and this is right in the middle. Instead, I really want people to know that you can get a ton of phone for a lot less than many of this device's competitors. We should be celebrating how much more gadget you can get for a hair more than half the price of an iPhone 10. But there is one last idea we need to explore before I can wrap this review up. The tricky thing here, pricing in the smartphone world, especially in Android land, fluctuates a lot and there is no carrier backing helping out the OnePlus 6. We've just come to expect prices to jump around on Galaxies and LGs, and carriers love to entice consumers with special deals and trade-in offers. For all of those reviewers out there complaining about the high price of the LG G7, T-Mobile launched the phone with a BOGO. You signed up for service, you got two for the price of one. If you're the tech head in your family and you've got a number of gadgets to support, well, that's a better deal than the pricing you'll get on a OnePlus 6. That's why my conclusion for the OnePlus 6 specifically and a number of other phones in this space needs to be handled with that little bit of nuance. Go to the manufacturer's website, pick out the phone you want and push buy. The OnePlus 6 is maybe the best smartphone deal available today. However, a savvy shopper with a little time might be able to land all of those fun extra flagship features on a competitor's product closer to this price tier with just a little bit of work. Still, I've become a fan of this brand. From a company I loved to hate, watching them grow up to become a solid competitor worthy of a recommendation. And thanks to a handful of companies, OnePlus deserves a lot of credit here. The sub $700 market is a really exciting place. As always, thanks so much for watching. There are links down below this video where you can support production on this channel, including uh, checking out my Patreon campaign. Uh, you get early access to videos, production diaries, and if you wanna join me on those camera and audio reviews, those deep dives into the features you care about, well, that's exclusive content on patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. You know where you can find me around the rest of the internet on the socials at some gadget guy, and I will catch you all on the next review.